Hey everyone, it's Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, DevOps TV, and we're here at Does 17 San Francisco, and I have two really, really, some of my favorite people in the DevOps world as our guest. To my far right, gentleman here is Sam Guckenheimer of Microsoft, and Sam is responsible for a large uh, transformation at the uh, uh, Visual Studio project, right Sam? Mm -hmm. But since then, you've done so many different things and written so much around DevOps and and really been a uh, a linchpin in the community. So thanks for that and thanks for being here today. To my immediate right, speaking of re of writing, is renowned author, PhD, um, the brains behind the DevOps uh, survey, right? And just a really nice person also and, and a real another linchpin of the DevOps movement, Dr. Nicole Forsgren. Hi, Dr. Nicole, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Please get a little shaky. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole does that to yeah. us. Yeah, Nicole oh. does that to you. But anyway, guys, thanks for coming today. It's a pleasure. So we're gonna talk metrics, DevOps metrics, yep. right? And- um, Really kind of like one of our favorite things. Yeah. Sam and I nerd out about this all the time. Well, you know, we're gonna give you a chance to nerd out in front of all these people watching. So, you know, there's, there's, there's lies, damn lies, and metrics, or statistics, <laughs> as the case may be. But seriously, you know, one of the things I noticed even at last year's uh, does show and at some of the shows since then is we've gotten into a thing now of, well, how do we know this DevOps works? What should we measure? Are we measuring the right things? Are we measuring them correctly? Are they important? Are they indicative of anything? And, and so certainly, you your career is built on this, right? You have a ton of My experience with it. Your too. career is built on right. it. So let's talk <laughs> metrics, guys. Let, you know, Sam, why don't we start with you? Well, so I think, I think the, the metrics discussion comes from a very legitimate desire to uh, be able to tell, is it working? And to be able to improve where it's not working well. So I think the, uh, it is really important that you measure uh, the right things and not measure the wrong things because measure you know so many of uh, people's um, measurement systems are out of step with the results they want to achieve so mm -hmm. I mean, we focus on for example looking at everything related to customer usage outside in everything related to our velocity that is how quickly can we get from change or idea into production and everything with regard to live site, that is what's the quality of service we deliver. What we don't look at is how good are you at estimating? How many hours did you spend? How uh, <clears throat> many bugs did you find or fix? How many um, uh, lines of code did you write? And mm -hmm. so forth. All of those things that people uh, in the past have measured that really are irrelevant to the user. Okay, And they create totally dysfunctional behavior. Why would you reward someone for writing more lines of code when they could do more reuse? Yep. Why would you tell someone how many bugs they're supposed to find and fix and punish them for not matching those curves? It's a great way to sell post-it notes. Yeah, just keep it is. stuff out of the out of the database. Well, and you want to know the truth, it's a great way to employ metrics people because give, you know, they just want something to measure. Sometimes, and, and with all due respect, I, I, I used to feel that way, especially when I, you know, before I was on this side of the camera and I was running companies, I, I used to feel drowned in metrics, right? And, and picking out ones, as you mentioned, Sam, picking out ones that made sense versus ones that were frankly bull or irrelevant. Yeah, and it is hard, it is hard to design the right KPIs for a service. Mm -hmm. um, the, you, you have to put a lot of thought into what results you really want to measure yep. yeah. and make sure you have the telemetry that allows you to do that. So speaking of designing metrics and designing what to measure, Nicole, what, you know, th that's going to be probably one of the hardest things in designing uh, the, the DevOps survey or the state of DevOps, you know, survey in that, as Sam says, look, you want to measure how many lines of code you wrote. I mean, I used to have a problem with this early on in DevOps where it seemed we were just so focused on how many times you released. Right? I released, I dropped 10 times a day. I dropped 50 times a day. I release every 
you know, every other second. I'm Amazon, I release every other half second. Is that really a measurement that we should, you know, rest our hats on and, and judge our success by? Well, I love that, you know, Sam points out that it's about outcomes and it's about success and it's about the outcomes that are important to you and your organization, right? And so, like, to a little bit, it's sort of an it depends thing. Mm -hmm. So, to some extent, release will matter, mm -hmm. but you also, I love something, Sam, you said a couple of years ago here at Doe's, you know, it's if you capture only one metric, you know exactly what will be gamed, right? And so, yes, release matters. Some sort of tempo or speed metric will matter, but will matter, but so will something in the stability realm, right? You do want measures that are going to be in tension, but not just for the sake of going fast and reliably. The reason that you deliver things quickly and reliably is so that you can deliver value for your end users. It's so that you can deliver features. It's so that you can keep, can keep up with compliance and, and regulatory changes. It's so that you can do something. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I, I work with companies when we work at Dora and they'll say, oh, well, we want to do DevOps. We want to do continuous delivery. We want to do these things. And I'm like, well, why? You know, we don't do it. We don't do continuous delivery because continuous delivery. We do continuous delivery. We do DevOps because it allows us to deliver value for our organization and for our customers. Right. Everyone wants, everyone wants to go through a digital transformation. Everyone yeah. wants... You know, wants to work at the modern speed of business. Everyone wants to be data driven when they do that, or yep. at least data informed. Thank right? you. Yes, absolutely. And um, uh, everyone thinks faster is better. Now, that's great, and measuring release frequency is important, but you can't do it in isolation. You also need to measure the release quality in production. We have a saying, there's no place like production. Mm -hmm. right? I have a slide with uh, ruby slippers and that saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. There's no place like production. What matters is what are users experiencing in production and how quickly you deliver value there. So being able to have a pipeline that can give you very high quality and give you a chance to, for example, uh, expose a new release progressively so that you can be sure that N plus one is better than N and roll more traffic to it as you see that in telemetry. Mm -hmm. That's really important technology. Mm -hmm. It's not just that you're going fast, it's that you're going fast and not breaking things. So you need a really high quality signal in the pipeline and you really need control over how you do production. Or if it's not, if N plus one is not better than N, right. you know it and you can fix it quickly, right? Yes. For, for people who are only releasing, for organizations that are only releasing once a year, twice a year, that is such a huge risk because then that subsequent code release or rollback takes such a long time. That's where speed gives you so much power and flexibility and control over your code and your environment. Mm -hmm. That's yes. what that speeds allows you to do, and that's what those metrics and that telemetry really like gives you that power over. Yeah. So speed. I mean, speed requires uh, not just going fast. It requires the not breaking things as well. Yes. You know, so um, that's why those two really need to go together. Yeah. So you need to have you need to have uh, an ability to test in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Um, we, uh, for example, took three years to overhaul our test portfolio to make it fast. You know, the goal was to be able to get uh, feedback to a developer uh, who had made a pull request uh, to get feedback to the developer in 10 minutes. So we're now running 60,000 automated tests in that, in actually seven minutes now, and we're trying to get the time down further. And only when those pass does that pull request get committed to master. So think of that across several hundred developers, mm -hmm. or in the case of you know something like your Windows organization, a few thousand. The um, the ability to get fast feedback and ensure that you catch the failures on the left 
is is really important. So you need to be doing both. You need to be measuring how good your pipeline is in delivering quickly and how robust it is in delivering quality. And then, of course, uh, in production, you need to be able to see, well, my first traffic on this new release is experiencing this. And so let's keep going. Let's go forward. Or let's kill it and redeploy. Got it. And, and what Sam is sharing, we're seeing among all of our high performers, yeah. right? The high performing organizations are achieving this as well. And they have for the last four years, over 23,000 data points around the world, all organizations, highly regulated. I mean, it's not just amazing technology firms. Every, we're, we're seeing this among all types of organizations. Yeah. Everyone right, can I, achieve this. So a couple of things. Let me tie a bow on this because we're over time. I know you I sure. mentioned you had a deadline. So number one. You're 100% correct. If this show is, is living proof of it, but I see it every day in what we do, this, this whole way of doing things that we call DevOps, or it's DevOps part of it, it, it crosses boundaries. It's not for tech firms, not only for tech firms. It's good for tech firms, but it's not only for tech firms. It's not only for retail. We see a ton of retail. It's not only for financial services. It's not only for healthcare. It's not only for manufacturing. It's not only for government. This crosses boundaries for all enterprises, number one. Number two, I really think, Sam, something you said just resonates right to the heart of it for me, which is we need to remember why we do all these measurements, why we're measuring these things, why metrics are important, because it's about the user at the end of the day. What's that user experience? Right, I interviewed a company here that's doing um, a you know machine based, but AI user experience. Right, so they're trying to figure out what the user experience will be from a machine perspective, which is pretty wild. But we've lost focus sometimes we, that we do things for the sake of doing them without remembering underlying why. Right, the science of DevOps, building and scaling your new book. But at the end of the day, it's about ROI, right? And that's what these companies are trying to achieve, a greater ROI, a greater return on investment. You achieve greater return on investment by providing a delightful user experience. And it, we would all do well to remember that. And I'll get off my soapbox with that. I'm I'll sorry. I'll plug two things. Go ahead, to, Sam. To, to that point. So uh, Satya Nadella, our CEO, mm -hmm. in his, his new book, Hit Refresh, talks about the most important Thing being empathy, that you need to have empathy for your customers and, mm -hmm. and for you know, not not just for your customer, really for everything. And and that takes you to a mindset where it's not um, inputs; it's a, it's that experience. And if the customer's having problems, you're on the line. You're troubleshooting. Um, the other thing I'd plug is I just put up a site, DevOps at Microsoft, with a whole bunch of articles and videos, you know, 20 articles and videos about how we work and the kinds of things we measure that uh, you can search for and, you know. URL? Uh, it's visualstudio.com slash learn slash DevOps at Microsoft. Search for Sam Guggenheim at DevOps Microsoft and... Hopefully it'll show up. You know what, Sam, if you can get me that URL, we'll include it in the show okay. notes for this. Try to get it up on DevOps.com. Sure. Nicole, one more time. Let people sure. see the beautiful cover of the book. Okay, so Accelerate is us. coming out. The ebook should be out in December, and the final book should be out in March. It's written by myself, Jess Humble, Gene Kim. It's based on the last four years of research that we've done at Dora, partnered up with Puppet. Um, we also have assessments, and we do have a paper coming out with ACMQ and CACM. Uh, co-authored with Mick Kirsten on um, the important types of measurements to include. Mick Kirsten's one of my favorite people, too. He's brilliant. He'll be here later. Oh, yes. All righty. And they just hired Dom Dominica there, you know, yes. at Test Stop, which is kudos to them. I have her book over there, too. Um, anyway, Sam, Nicole, thank you so much for coming on today. I'm sorry we ran over. No problem. Well, thanks but we'll for have you on us. again. All righty. Hey, this is Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, DevOps TV. Here at the DevOps Enterprise uh, Summit, 
uh, in San Francisco. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.